I'm Juan Lopez. Uh, I'm an alumni of Chicago Knights. I think one of my aunts approached me and they were at this point where they were trying to get me into a lot of different things, trying to let me branch out into different things. And robotics came up and I was really interested in it. And from there, I just kind of latched onto the Chicago Knights. My name is Jackie Moore. I work with the Chicago Knights robotics team. People are shocked <laughs> uh, when they discover that we're meeting in a mall. They all think it's kind of cool, too. My background is purely software. I became very active in the school system as I decided that I needed to take charge of kids' education. Robotics answers so many of the problems that we're trying to address. So today we're preparing to go to the After School Matter South Region Showcase. So we'll go in, we'll set up, uh, people will, will talk to us about what we're doing, we'll tell them about our projects. Our goal as a team is to try to show robotics is more than just the typical robot that people think about ourselves. It's an interesting mix because any demographic you can think of in the city of Chicago, and we have them all, the one thing they seem to have in common is that they want to make something with their hands. And on their very first visit, someone's gonna put something in your hands and say, I need you to help me do this. And the typical reaction is, what, what am I supposed to do with this? And generally, if they ask me that, I'll point to another student and say, help them out with that, and I walk away. What that does is that it takes away the stigma of not knowing because now there's no teacher to please. There's no adult to determine whether or not you're doing it right or wrong. It's just a peer, you know, someone your own age who's going to help you through the process. The best solution for education, in my opinion, is computational thinking. Computational thinking is not so much about doing things new as it is emphasizing those things that have value that students are doing already and showing them how to apply it someplace else. Many people will say that inner city girls can't do computer science. They don't think logically enough, they aren't focused enough. But have you ever watched a young girl uh, cornrow? That's a very complicated pattern. It's an algorithm to doing that process. But we don't tell them it's an algorithm. We don't tell them it's a pattern. It's just braiding hair. So they don't think that they know how to do it. They see the words and they walk away. With robotics, they're constantly forced to cross those boundaries. You can't do just electronics. You can't do just programming. You can't just do just mechanical. You start to recognize that nothing happens in a vacuum. Not even technical stuff happens in, in a vacuum. When we go to the competitions, it's sort of like a sports event where there are just a lot of people and everybody's full of energy and um, everybody's rooting for their team. Um, I'm Judge, I'm a junior. Since I've been here, we've gone to um, first tech challenge, um, first robotics competition, and bot ball. Bot ball is completely autonomous, so you actually have to go and edit all the code. Being a wealthier team isn't necessarily that much of an advantage if you're able to be resourceful. It's all the same game, and you see how everybody's, what everybody's twist on it is. Like, oh, our shooter works this way. Oh, somebody else basically has the same idea as ours, but oh, theirs doesn't work as good as ours, or theirs works a lot better than ours. I think we hold our own for, for the resources that we have, for the team that we have, um, how we come together. I think that we do, I think that we do pretty well. They decided which platform to actually use for each robot. So our students, we got a chance to learn C, they learn how to use LabVIEW, 
They learn to build with rock components, metal, aluminum parts, plastic parts, Lego parts, and how to intermix them all in various settings. There is no doubt in my mind that this could not have happened 10 years ago, because without the support of companies like SparkFun, like iRobots, uh, without this maker movement, without this sudden realization that we need to mentor kids, without that collective mindset, it wouldn't have happened because it would have been too cost prohibitive. As the tools became easier to use, we discovered the mentors became easier to find. It's not just the students who don't know, the adults don't know. I consider myself a facilitator. To be honest, I still get a wrench and pliers confused when it comes to the names. And it's not because they look alike, it's because it's not important to me. What's important to me is to understand the big picture so I can help them learn. The less I know about the details, the more empowered they are and the more they have to do with themselves. I've, I've learned a lot. I got, some, I got to meet some interesting people, um, a lot of fun experiences. I got to do a lot of traveling. When I first joined the program, um, my mom was pretty happy about that. She liked that it's not exactly your typical program, like it's more intellectual and like you really have to put your mind to work um, in a robotics program. By the time a kid leaves our relationship, the main thing that they all have is self-confidence. They suddenly understand that if they're willing to work hard, they can do almost anything. And that's really what colleges and employers are looking for. Can we put you in a situation? Can you understand the situation? Take appropriate risks, redirect your course if necessary, and accomplish something in the end.